What's going on, Imperials? It's Emperor Cubone here. So, as far as we know, the next new Pokémon game to come out will be Legends Z to A. And that's just fine with me, you go ahead and take your time. But that extended period does give them ample opportunity to work on the material, and possibly even respond to fan critique or suggestion. So let's offer up a few things that I would expect to be addressed in some way, and think about what could make the next Legends game a smash hit, and secure the legacy of this particular subseries for years to come. Number 6. Mythical Pokémon I'm not gonna waste my breath about Zygarde, because they're clearly planning on doing something with it after all these years, but we can turn our attentions to the other Pokémon that round out the end of the decks, those being the Mythicals. There are a number of distinctions that people love to bicker over between Legendary and Mythical Pokémon, but one of the most prominent is the methods of obtaining these rare monsters, with Mythicals largely being post-launch add-ons that you can download at a later time. This was the case for three Pokémon in Kalos, Diancie, Hoopa, and Volcanion. And obviously this approach leaves it difficult to integrate any of these Pokémon into the story of the main games, which leaves these Mythicals without much personality, making it hard to become invested in them. However, if we look at the last Legends game, there may be hope because in Arceus we got to see all of the Pokémon that were too elusive before. Obviously, Arceus was the title character, so we knew that the Llama God would be there, but Sinnoh also really opened up how many mythicals they could have in one region, and gave us four more. However, instead of providing them at a later time, the Hisui region included all of the mythical Pokémon in one. And sure, there may not have been extensive incorporation to the story, but there were unique interactions with all of them. From Shaman regrowing a patch of dead flowers, to Darkrai being found in the mysterious moonlight, plus a fun little event with Manaphy and Fione that was first hinted at in the previous games. Now, another cross-game promotion would be cool, but I would just settle for seeing Diancie pop up somewhere in Lumios, maybe being appraised at a gemstone shop since people don't know what it is. Or imagine seeing the giant silhouette of the unbound Hoopa in the distance, only to run over and discover the confined form next to a prison bottle in a destroyed building. Or, you know, anything for Volcanion unlike its entire history. It's possible that they will do this already, but a little love for these underrepresented mythicals would go a long way. Number 5. Altered Locations Not disconnected from the last entry, I think it is imperative that we not only flesh out the existing areas of the city that we've seen before, but also include sections of Lumios that we haven't come across in the past. I think namely the underground is the most common theory, given real-world parallels, but an entire underlevel of the city to effectively double the size of the map would be a perfect excuse to more frequently encounter wild Pokémon, and then something can happen to it to collapse the tunnels and maybe explain why it's not in X and Y. Also, I do expect some method of soaring above the city, especially since Kalos is the region that introduced Sky Battles, so a proto-version of those trainers trying to master flight would be quite hysterical. So that's one part, but as I said, simply having a new take on areas that we knew is a necessity as well. They did this in Hisui, obviously, however with the entire Sinnoh region to take from, they had an advantage by being able to lean on all of the familiar locations, like the Three Lakes, Eterna Forest, and even Mount Coronet. However, since reportedly we will have decidedly less to explore in this era of Kalos, no Santaloon Forest or Reflection Cave, they will really have to lean on all of the landmarks of Lumio City. Of course that means Prism Tower, but to me just as integral are the plazas throughout the city. Now, when we saw them, there wasn't really much to them other than maybe some pillars, but they still seemed prominent fixtures in the community if only for their different colored names. And indeed, they might already be doing something in this regard, because in the older looking map, the plazas are totally blank, and in the new Tron looking one, they're filled with various random structures. So who knows what could be placed in there now? And then you throw in some other possible memorable spots like the fancy museum, or hey, maybe the origins of the ghost girl, or maybe even some version of the Looker Bureau, and probably the Go-Goat Transit System, they would all be fun to see in sort of a redesign in the same vein as Jubilife Village back in the Hisui region, giving Kalos some of the character that it lacked before, and I really think dividing the whole city into larger explorable sections like the Arceus maps would be a perfect way to split up this game. Number 4. Gameplay so instead of the obvious, make new regional forms and evolutions, I'm going to discuss the core gameplay loop. 
It was so much fun to roam around ancient Sinnoh and hide in the tall grass to throw balls, or roll out of the way of attacking Pokémon, and then seamlessly transition between multiple different mounts while exploring out in the wild. And truthfully, it would be a shame to lose a lot of that here. I don't expect a lot of hiding in the city streets, unless there's just big piles of garbage, I guess, but being able to run and dodge enemy attacks and even climb up the side of buildings seems required to justify this game existing at all. Otherwise, how is it any different than the last time we were here in the Gen 6 games if you can't pull off any of those unique tricks? So, similar locomotion is one thing, but the gameplay goes beyond that. In the first Legends game, they made small tweaks to vastly improve the quality of life, such as relearning any move at any time in the menu. But that has carried over to Gen 9, so I think we're good on that. However, I wouldn't mind manual evolutions coming back. I loved letting my Pokémon stay in one form without hitting the B button 75 times or more with each level that it gained. Thankfully, the odds are good on that, but what I'm really hoping for is an expanded crafting system. For a first attempt, the Arceus crafting was decent, and I loved how you could use your Pokémon to interact with the environment around you to collect materials, so I hope that they can find sufficient use for that feature in an urban location, and even lengthen the list of available items like maybe the terrain extender that you could throw out onto the battlefield to aid in your captures. Or perhaps you could be able to craft your own evolution items given the right supplies, or maybe even items like an assault vest or a shell bell, but more on that later, I guess. The point is, the first the first Legends game was a great proof of concept for these kinds of traversal and inventory changes to mainline Pokémon, and it would be a shame not to explore these mechanics to a fuller extent in the sequel. Number 3. Traditional Battling I'd say one of the major complaints I hear out of Legends Arceus is the lack of Pokémon battling with an overemphasis on the captures, and that may be true, but that's not what I'm talking about. As nice as more battling would be, and these style changes are very much appreciated, I can tell you that, it was a little bare bones with the lack of certain features that we come to rely on over the years, you know, little things like hold items and abilities. Like I was mentioning earlier, it would be neat to craft a choice scarf, or a focus sash, or an EXP share, or something, but it wouldn't do you any good if the Pokémon can't even hold the item. I get that maybe the first Legends game was limited and couldn't handle that, or maybe for lore reasons the Pokémon were too feral, but a more confined, domesticated setting would surely allow the Pokémon to gain the skill of holding onto one thing, and if not, then surely it would be alright for abilities to come back instead. In all likelihood they will, but certain Pokémon native to Kalos, like Wobbuffet, would be fundamentally altered without them. I mean, can you imagine Shedinja without Wonder Guard? But the reason I'm fairly confident in them returning is the fact that Megas are also on the table as well. It would be a little too odd to have Mega Kangaskhan without its parental bond, or even Mega Venusaur without Thick Fat. Plus those other abilities that were basically designed for the Megas. And you might say that's a guarantee for the items to return, given their Mega Stones, but we have seen them do that without an item before, so who knows? I would say there's a decent possibility for both of these to come back, which will help to set this apart from the last Legends game, and then we can leave the lack of items and abilities for the Let's Go subset of games instead. Number 2. Pokeballs one of the most underrated aspects of Legends Arceus to me has got to be the new Pokeballs. There weren't too many, but on top of the Heavy Ball, they added the Leaden Ball and the Gigaton Ball, basically the great and ultra variants of the Hisuian Heavy Ball. So seeing three variations of my favorite Pokeball was wonderful news, however they also gave us the completely original Feather Ball. Instead of arcing your throw, this ball went straight as an Aerocuda, great for catching faraway targets like flying types. And this one also got stronger variants in the Wing Ball and the Jet Ball. And while we have occasionally gotten new ones like the Beast Ball or the Dream Ball, these were the first really useful Pokeball additions since Gen 4. And there was technically the Origin Ball as well, but that's a whole different thing. So, can we please get some cool new Pokeballs in this version of Kalos, whether it's in the past or the future? We could even have a relative of Clement be tinkering with them to try and create a more efficient means of capture, like say a Pokeball that performs better when there are weather conditions on the battlefield. Or one of my favorites, some kind of magnet ball that has increased effect on electric or steel types. That would be quite fitting for a relative of the Lumio City Gym, or maybe one where you fuse an eyeball to it and it homes in on the target. The point is, the cool Pokeballs from Arceus may not have carried over to other games, but it would be quite negligent not to experiment at least a little bit again. And hey, at the very least, maybe we could get another form of Voltorb out of it for our troubles. 
Number 1. Team Flare it's no secret that Team Flare is one of, if not the worst evil teams in the Pokémon series, which is one of the major contributing factors to why X and Y felt so unpolished, and why people were expecting that Z version that was put off until just now. But seeing a bit more backstory to flesh them out could be in order. This is different than any history to do with AZ and the war or the ultimate weapon, since he really had nothing to do with the villainous plan and is really just more of an afterthought but I'm just talking about the Flare organization itself, which was really lacking in overall theme, cohesion, or even likability. In Hisui, we got to see the origins of Team Galactic, and while maybe that didn't shed light on Cyrus as a villain, it was at least interesting to see how far the organization had fallen from their original goals, simply helping the locals to establish a foothold in the region, basically being the exact opposite of where they ended up. So a little something like that for Team Flare would be much appreciated to even marginally redeem this lost cause. Maybe we could see Malva's ancestor start the team with the idea of preserving the beauty in the region outside of the city to ensure that nature isn't overrun by humanity. Sort of a Central Park initiative, but then obviously they took it way too far down the line. Or if parts of slash the whole game is set in the future, then maybe we could see the opposite and have a descendant of one of their prominent members try to make amends for their past mistakes. Which could even include a double twist of sorts with Shauna's offspring running the team now, something wild like that. All I'm saying is they have a chance to either plant some seeds or reap some fruit that could really shine a positive light on Team Flare. And while they're already going to be doing something with Zygarde, they really ought to take this opportunity to expand upon the lackluster evil team. I mean, for crying out loud, they already have a giant underground lab in Lumio City where the game is going to be. So, for the sake of making the Kalos region feel the slightest bit more fulfilling, Team Flare really needs to get a spotlight. But those are just some of the inclusions that I think would make Legends Z to A an even better game than its predecessor. What features would you include to turn this into a near-perfect game? Let me know down in the comments. Also be sure to leave a like, share this video, and subscribe so that you too can become an Imperial today. And until next time, stay grounded.